Welcome, sisters in medicine. It is time to rock it with Dr. Me First, a podcast all about authentic conversations between us, female physicians. My hope is that through our conversation, it brings you encouragement, inspiration, community, hope, and fun into your life and your practice. I'm Dr. Erin Wiseman, your colleague in medicine and coach in life, and this is episode number 13. I'm speaking with Dr. Julieta La Roca. Sorry, Dr. La Roca, if I didn't get the emphasis right, but she is an amazing female physician who's recently launched into the world um, speaking specifically to single mothers as she is a single mom in medicine herself. The word that we talk about is limits, and I think that you're going to find this conversation absolutely amazing. So go ahead, buckle up, get ready to listen, and then stick around afterwards for that little kick of encouragement. Hey, everybody, Dr. Wiseman. I have got another super special guest that I'm going to let her introduce herself and her magic word for today. All right, go ahead. Hi, Dr. Wiseman. Thank you so much for having me here today. My name is Dr. Juli La Roca, and my word of the day is limits. I love it. All right, Dr. LaRocca. I can't roll my tongue, sorry. But tell me tell me what you do in your professional life. So many things. Uh, I'll start with non-professional. Because those are funner. Yes. <laughs> I'm a mom. I'm a single mama, which ties into the, my professional work. I have a three-year-old, and she's just super vivacious and fun and the light of my life. Is, he, is she a three-ager? Yes, definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My two and a half year old is already a three ager. I'm like, oh, damn, when she turns 16, what's going to happen? <laughs> I, know. I know. She's got a huge personality, which is kind of embarrassing sometimes, but I know she's going to be a really, really good adult. So I'm really yeah, she'll, she'll change this world. Okay, sorry, I got you off track. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So um, that's my non professional life. Uh, biggest role there is as a mom. I also like to do other things. You know, I'm a musician, I love to dance. I do um, all kinds of dance, kizomba, salsa, bachata, all the Latin dances, and some tango too. So I have a lot of hobbies. I play guitar. Um, I try and stay grounded through those things. So I just think it's important to mention that Mm -hmm. because in my professional life, I am a family physician. I graduated a little over a year ago, actually, from residency. Mm -hmm. And straight out of residency, I entered a fellowship for integrative medicine through the Academy of Integrative Health and Medicine. And that's a two-year fellowship. It's all virtual, which is really nice with some retreats where we go and do some clinical work and hands-on and some experientials. It's just been fantastic. Uh, So that's been my kind of primary focus from a medicine standpoint. I also have my own practice doing integrative consults and I actually do home visits. So it's nice. It keeps the overhead low and it's just a really fun way for me to be able to connect with my patients again on a more intimate level, really cultivate that kind of old school physician, physician patient relationship. Absolutely. Because there's nothing more special than when somebody invites you into their home. You know, that's like, that's their personal den. That is their space. And I think it's so rewarding. I did home visits as well um, when I'm practicing, actually getting ready to jump back into home visits again, because you learn so much about people from, yes. from their environment. And um, how special is it to be invited into their story of their life? <laughs> Absolutely. So that's why I love to do that. And then on the side, <laughs> or more, actually, this has been more my focus and medicine is more on the side. Uh, I'm doing another form of healing. And that is through life coaching. Whoop, whoop. Single moms. Yeah. So I, a few months ago, I launched a coaching business and a website, a blog, coming soon, podcast, coming soon, online course, the whole the whole kit and caboodle. Yep. Get it, girl. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. For helping empower single moms to really become unbreakable 
So that's the that's the brand there is Unbreakable Moms and to break through the limits that come with being a single mom and being a woman and being a mother and all the limits that everybody puts on us and the ones that we put on ourselves too. Are you focusing on like all single moms or more like physician single moms or moms in healthcare or, or it doesn't matter to you? All single moms. But of course, being a physician, I tend to draw in the single physician female moms. Right. Right. Which is fantastic. Uh, really, the message that I'm sending out is just for everybody. It's not even just for single moms, right? But it's whoever resonates with my story and who re- whoever resonates with me, they hear that message a little bit clearer than if they hear it from, you know, an old white guy. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Women unite. Well, we found each other, Dr. LaRocca, because I had read your story. I think on LinkedIn, maybe somebody had reposted it and I had contacted you directly because you talked about your um, pregnancy and residency. And me having been pregnant twice through residency, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get this woman on the phone and talk to her. So let's talk about your word today, limits. Oh, it's so tingly that I I just can't wait to hear your spin on limits. Yeah. So the reason I picked that word is because I strongly believe that not only are we so restricted and restrained by the limits that we put on ourselves, but almost equally as powerful as the ones that we allow others to put on us. So as a female physician and going through residency and trying to not only be pregnant and have a child and raise a child and then doing it on my own, I mean, I can't tell you how many times everyone was saying, how can you or you can't? Right. Right. You're off. You know, find something else to do. Don't pursue a fellowship. Don't start your own business. You know, focus on getting that nine to five steady income so you can provide for your kid and not pursue your dreams as an entrepreneur and helping other single moms. Uh, so that's, yeah, it's, it's time to break through those limits. Breaking limits. I love it because as we were talking before the recording, I felt that exact same way being a huge waddling intern with a big old belly up to the surgical table, like eight months pregnant, you know, and just hearing, um, Hey, you're throwing your life away by having a kid. And I, I, I still go back to that on, on other people putting their self-limiting beliefs onto me. It was like, come on. And it's so inspiring to see you um, through all of your adversities to say, F this, I'm doing it anyway. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, in residency, people even, I had attending sometimes even question my intellect because I was pregnant, which is just absurd to me. They would say things like, well, I know you're a little bit slower, you know, because of the pregnancy. This is outrageous, right? You know, I used to tell people, I would be like, it's not a disease, people. You're not going to catch it. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, All the, all the, 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 yes, the, the perception, um, You know, and that's the other thing, too, that I think as women in medicine now that we are trying to be more vocal about is to be like, you know what, the majority of our training in our, you know, some of our starting to be productive years in the career, we are fertile. Mm -hmm. And we need to take a different perspective on this because the studies show female physicians have better mortality, morbidity rates. Patients love us. They give us so much better satisfaction scores. And so it's time, I think, that we stop being a round peg in a square hole and we start drilling some round holes for us to fit into. And I love how you have gone, um, you've gone rogue off the map and done it your own way. Tell me about some of those challenges. My goodness. I think from 
a financial standpoint, it's always a risk, right? So I don't have the luxury of a second income to kind of support me through this entrepreneurial journey. So that's been a challenge. You know, it, it, uh, I have had to moonlight here and there and just really plan and be prepared for, you know, what's to come and have emergency fund and just very basic finance stuff that nobody ever teaches you, right? Um, and kind of learned on my own. So that's, Absolutely. that's always a concern. And I, and I bring it to light because it's a huge concern for any single moms out there. And even just any, any female physician that wants to kind of break out of the mold and do more than just what their MD allows mm-hmm. them to do. I can speak to that. Mm -hmm. God love my husband, but he's a farmer and they don't make no damn money. And so I am the primary breadwinner. So yeah, when I decided to make changes to my practice, I mean, I definitely felt that as well. Like the financial burden of my choices. But you know what really I had to get down to and realize nothing is secure. I mean, your nine to five or I hope I hope people have nine to five, but I know it's probably more like seven to eight jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be gone tomorrow. You know, it could, you could have a cut, you could have a change in CEO, you know, they, they usually don't get rid of physicians, but you know, that's the thing I think we take for granted when we're employed, that there's something in the security or the stability of it. When in actuality, if you think about life and, and we deal with life and death every single day, there is no security in it. You're not more secure having a contract versus um, doing something entrepreneurial. So you might as well do what your heart is singing and what your soul is longing for. But it definitely is a big step out um, on the finance side. I don't know about you, but I had a bunch of student loans and still do have student loans Mm -hmm. that, you know, they send the bill every freaking month (laughs) that you have to stare down in the face and say, okay, how are we going to do it this month? But like you said, I think if you just get some good, basic financial um, advice, it doesn't take the challenge away, but it makes it more manageable. You know, like the quote, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Mm -hmm. I think that pretty much describes an entrepreneurial journey as well. It's like, how do you get this business started? How do you pursue something that, that seems maybe off the grid? You just do it one bite at a time. Absolutely. Pointillism. Tell me, tell me about your like small little steps on how you kind of got onto your journey. So I knew that I wanted to heal, right? I didn't want to practice medicine kind of in the conventional way. I, as I was exploring integrative medicine and different forms of healing, I started to understand more and more that so much of our disease comes from our traumas. Mm Mm-hmm really, and they begin to manifest themselves as physical disease. And even with my integrative patients, I could give them all the supplements to take, all the nutritional education that I had at my fingertips, you know, all the encouragement, coaching, and they still couldn't make those changes. Mm -hmm. They were hurting and suffering on the inside. And so without being able to really heal from the inside emotionally, they weren't making any progress. So looking at root causes and continuing to back up and look at further root causes, I realized that um, so much of the healing, even in physical disease, comes from our emotional healing. And that's why I, in my own self-reflection and really looking inwards into my own story and my own healing, I think is so important for us to learn these essential life skills. Thus, I created Unbreakable Moms and decided to do life coaching instead. So the Unbreakable Moms is kind of your like passion project, kind of what spurred out of that. I can say truth prescriptions is definitely my passion project. I initially started just doing like little social media squares um, that I would put out on Facebook and Instagram just to like say what my heart needed to say to myself, but say it to other people. And it's been amazing what that has transformed into. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And I think really tuning into that passion 
makes your life so much happier. It makes it hard to stop working. Mm -hmm. It makes it easy to get out of bed every morning. And that is the meaning of a fulfilled life, right? Uh, Having those passions and pursuing that kind of personal destiny. So if, you know, for some people that's medicine, right? That's, Mm -hmm. That's their training that they've had. And that's wonderful. And I think part of the limits that I've felt is having to stay within that model when in reality, maybe medicine wasn't the career choice for me. I mean, I think it's hard to really say that because I do love it so much, but I'm also incredibly passionate about this other work I'm doing. Uh, but breaking out of that mold is was another, going back to the question you asked about you know, challenges, that's huge because you go through, I don't even know how many years of training and putting blood, sweat, and tears into getting that MD and then finally graduating residency and then, oh, not using that, (laughs) right? I think that, yeah. They judge you and they say, you know, you're throwing away all this training. Like, how could you have trained for over a decade and put all this work and how many people do you need, you know, how many people need you and there's so much to be done still. So it's hard. It's, It's hard. So that's, that's why I chose that word limit. Yeah. I think one question that all female physicians have to ask ourselves is, as we are doing like an introspective look is, what if medicine is the wrong choice for us? Because I know that was a question that I didn't even want to tiptoe around. I didn't even want to conceptualize that maybe I had made a bad choice. One, because I'm super type A and a perfectionist in recovery. <laughs> and I didn't want to say that I had made a wrong choice. But, you know, after I bellied up to the bar and took on that question and said, yeah, what if medicine was the wrong choice for me? I can now say that I learned so much from it. Yes. That moving forward, I will always have that medical degree. I will always be able to take care of people. I will always have a love of learning that was fostered by medical school. And I think if you can, if you can play with that question, then um, you're ready to break out of some of your limits. I remember one question that my life coach asked me that I still think about at times. It's, she said, what is the one thing that you could never give up? Mm -hmm. And my answer at the time um, was my licensure, my medical licensure. I could never give up my medical licensure because my identity was so tied up in practicing medicine. But, you know, flash forward a few years later and I'm like, oh yeah, I could give that up because now I know that I am not that piece of paper. I am not that number from the state of Indiana that can write prescriptions. I am Aaron and I am so much more and I am enough. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. Love everything you're saying. And and that's why, you know, I, I think it's so important to have more than just one identity with that MD. That's why I call myself a musician and a dancer and a mom and, you know, a a learner and a lifelong student, right? Uh, Because we are so much more than just those two little letters after our name. Yeah. So I work with um, physicians, but also professional women. And that's one of the first things that I make them go through is like self-awareness. I ask them to complete the statement, I am. And they have to tell me, you know, what they are using that. And it's amazing. I will say 90% of my tribe are what they do. I am a doctor. I am an accountant. I am a lawyer. But you know what? Then I ask that question again after about two months of working with me. And the um, answers are astonishing. Love it. You know, I get, I am enough. I am beautiful. I am radiant. I am fierce. And, you know, I think that is what we need in our culture. We need to stop being what we're doing. And, and, you know, instead of human doings, we need to be human beings. Exactly. Exactly. Gosh, I love life coaching. I think everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs a coach. Everybody needs therapy, go through their traumas, you know, coaching, mentors. We, these are just skills that are essential to a happy life. So what would you tell that female resident right now who's listening to our podcast? What would you tell her that she might need to know from your experience and from where you're standing at as a fellow right now? 
Great question. I would tell her a couple of things. So the first would be how do I say this? You, your experience in residency will be what you allow it to be. So what you allow others to do to you, the limits you allow them to impose on you, the schedules, the abuse, that is all allowed. And if you don't want that, don't allow it. The second piece I would say is squeaky wheel gets the oil. (laughs) <laughs> this was my motto in residency. Because if I was, for the first year, you know, when I had my daughter and was raising an infant, the first two years, really, I was very silent, incredibly silent. I just took it all. And eventually I crashed and burned really hard. And once I was able to kind of rise from the ashes, I spoke up. And that's what I would tell the resident is speak up. Don't be silent. They can't ignore you the more that you are loud. And I promise you, you're not the only one that has these feelings. Yeah. I think that's so important to remember. Yeah. All it takes is one person to speak up. And I I guarantee you there's a band that will stand behind you. Absolutely. Because you are not the only one. You are not alone in in what you are experiencing. And it's one of those like speak up even if your voice trembles. Yeah, absolutely. So taking that responsibility and then doing something about it. So when you accept that responsibility that, yes, I'm allowing these things to happen to me, then suddenly you can control, right? Then you can do something about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Anything else? Or actually, tell us tell us the best way that um, we can learn more about you or contact you. Yeah, so I you can check out my website. That's probably the best place. It's www.unbreakable.mom. So it's M-O-M. And that has all my blogs, which has my residency story there, which is kind of grueling and intense, and some other... You know, the mailing list has my unbreakable formula, which I really encourage everyone to take a look at, even if you're not a single mom, because that's been my intense, intense work over the last few months is really understanding what makes a person resilient and what helped me get through those hard times. And it's pretty concise. It's only 12 pages. There's a lot more in there than just those 12 pages, right? A lot more to dive into, but it's a starting place. Mm -hmm. It's a starting place for building that resilience, for believing in yourself, for being able to to really break through any limits that you're putting on yourself. So check out my website there, unbreakable.mom, or, you know, just email me directly. It's huli at unbreakable.mom. That's J-U-L-I at unbreakable.mom. I'm always just open to connecting with other female physicians. I, it's so important to me to have that connection. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, because together we rise. Absolutely. And I've had, you know, some female physicians reach out and they're not single moms and they don't want coaching, but they just want to say hi and tell me their story. And I want to tell them mine. And, you know, we resonate with one another and that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Because in such a noisy world and such a busy world right now, and that's the whole premise of this podcast, is just to know that there is a community available and there is help for anyone who asks for it. And I am so glad to have you as a guest today. We must do this again. You're going to have to pick another word and we're going to have to talk about it some more because um, I love, 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 love what you're doing. I love your spirit and I love that you are going off the grid and following your heart's desire. So I have to listen to these interviews a couple different times to get them ready for editing and sending them off to my producer. And I have to say that this one with Dr. LaRocca, every freaking time I listen to it, I hear something new and I walk away with goosebumps because I can 100% relate with her story and Um, Just hearing her adversities and what she's come through, but then also hearing that like peace in her voice 
is so comforting to me. So I hope that you walk away from this conversation just uplifted and taking a positive piece away from it. But what I want to do during this kick of encouragement time today is pose some of the questions that I mentioned in the interview and reflect them back to you. The one big one that I continue even to think about in my own life, and I mentioned it in the interview, is what if medicine was the wrong choice? I mentioned in my own story that for years, even through my unhappiness and through and through my burnout and through transforming my life, I could not reconcile with this question. It just hurt too much. It was too much of a burden to even try to start processing. It shook me down to my very core to even consider that maybe I had made the wrong decision and maybe I had spent years of my life doing something that after the fact turned out to be the wrong decision. But you know what? When I finally swallowed it down and finally process through it. And I'll be honest, I'm not a journaler. I struggle to sit down and write things. And I think part of it is because it makes me write, it makes me think through issues more than if I just kind of go through my spastic brain and and think through things. But when I finally made myself sit down in front of a yellow lined piece of paper and write on the top, what if being a doctor was the wrong choice, Erin? And just started writing a few sentences. It was like the floodgates opened. And it was as if I was having a conversation with myself. um, Dealing through it. Now I'm not schizophrenic. I promise I wasn't talking to like my split personality self. But it was so insightful to say. Well what if it was? It's okay. You can move forward from this. You can use the tools and the education and the knowledge that you gained along the way and it'll be fine. And once I kind of came to that point, then I knew actually it wasn't a mistake because if I could walk away with so many positives, then it was absolutely the right course for my life. So I challenge you with that question, or maybe it's a different spin on a different question that was kind of rolling around in your brain as you were listening to the podcast of, um, you know, something else going on in your life was maybe the wrong decision or the wrong path, like actually sit down and roll with that and see what comes through with it. If sitting with yourself is too painful, um, get a close friend, call Dr. LaRocca, call me. Let's talk through this because by swallowing it down and actually processing through it, rather than throwing it back in that deep, dark closet of the back of our mind, doesn't work. Because eventually, you are going to have to process through it. You are going to have to ask and answer the hard questions in your life. And why not do that in a trusting way and in a comforted way and in a supportive way? So again, I hope you walk away with a bunch of encouragement from this interview because it is absolutely one of my most favorite ones. Well, that's it for episode number 13. I am so glad that you joined me today. And if you have enjoyed these first 13 episodes, I want to encourage you to come join me. If you have MD or DO behind your name and you can think of one word to talk about, you can be my guest. And I would love to have you on the show. So I'm going to put the link in the show notes of where you can get scheduled. Super easy super non-prep, no gunner work involved with it. You just show up, we record, and then I release it later to the world. So get signed up. If you're a little bit nervous about having your voice out there, you're not sure how you're going to sound, hey, this is real life. You'll notice on here there are lots of mistakes. There are lots of blips. There's dogs barking in the background. There's children screaming. There's occasional construction noises. It's life. We deal with it. I just want you to come and share what you have. So check out the link in the show notes. Again, if you need anything, Dr. LaRocca's website is beautiful. Come join me at Truth Prescriptions. And remember, your life, your calling, your pulse matters. 